Hello, hello, hello. Today's special guest is none other than Austin Juliano. And Austin is a social media expert and a keynote speaker and a public speaker. Now, when we say a social media expert, um, a lot of people say that that's who they are, but this guy is truly quite amazing. I'll let him introduce himself, by the way, um, regarding that issue. And also, he he's well known for being a live stream influencer. And I think he regularly streams to an audience of 30,000, if I'm correct. And uh, his skills include building social media campaigns and he turns your brand into a marketing machine. And he also helps businesses grow leads and create viral content. Guys, I was so happy when I met this guy on LinkedIn so, and I begged him to be on the show and I'm so happy he's on it today. Hi, Austin. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you so much for having me here. Hi, I was super pumped to meet you too. Hello, audience. I'm really excited to share some stuff with all of you. Yes, um, we should be very happy because um, I had to persuade Austin to come on this show and share a lot of his experience and tips on how to grow with social media. First of all, uh, please tell us, how did, what was your background before you started to become a social media expert? I'm gonna go through this quick because it's kind of a long thing. Uh, my background before anything else is I'm actually dropped out of college. I'm a college dropout. I went to massage therapy school. I grew a massage therapy practice. I know, weird and strange <laughs> and I was doing pretty decently at it. And then I met my girlfriend and she was a graphic designer on our first date. She was telling me about graphic design and branding and stuff like that, marketing. And some other guy who wanted to date her came over and started trying to like win her over. And I ended up selling her graphic design services to him. And she was like, wait, did you just make me money? I was like, yeah. And she was like, do you want to keep doing that? I'm like, do you want to keep going on a date with me? And it kind of just steamrolled from there to being in a small town and selling graphic design and then marketing. And I was looking at kind of the ecosystem. This was like 12, 13 years ago, something crazy. This was before social media really exploded and people were paying a thousand dollars to be in a full page print ad to get 10,000 impressions with their little advertisement. And I was like, watch what I can do for $1,000 on Facebook and let's see your business grow. And I kind of just jumped on it right away. I was really into Facebook. We're selling a little bit of Facebook advertising. And like any dumb 20 something year old, I had a lot of success and that went to my head and I made stupid business decisions. And then all of it crumbled because that's what happens in business. And instead of moving back home into my mom's and like building my life over again, my girlfriend and I looked at each other and we're like, what is the dumbest thing we can possibly do? And we're like, we could pack up everything we own, which is like a carload of stuff and drive down to New York City with no connections, no resources, you know, no job opportunities and figure it out. And so we did that. And we drove down from upstate New York to New York City. Uh, my car broke down and it just so happened to break down on the one road in all of New York City that has 24 seven parking. And we slept out of my car for a few months trying to just make it. So I was homeless in New York with 43 cents to my name and it was insane. Uh, but then what happened was being in this like social media world that I've always kind of been in and like marketing and always kind of trying to learn and develop this new social media medium hit called Meerkat. It was live streaming Meerkat. And then three days later, Periscope. Yes. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And one of the things that you will learn in this space, and I hope everybody takes away is whenever there's a new social media, jump into it because you have so much runway in terms of it's such a small community. The, the developers are really invested in growing that community. So you get to explode your following really, really fast. You get to make a ton of connections. And it's just this small little viral community that supports each other. Be an early adopter. So I jumped into Meerkat and what happened was there was a buddy of mine who also jumped into it at the same time. And we did a live stream together. And the first live stream I did with him, there was 3, 
thousand people watching us concurrently. And it like clicked in my brain. I was like, 3,000 people. Like I would have to be one of the most famous public speakers to get a stage filled with 3,000 people. I have to be like that Kevin was Hart. from no marketing? No marketing. Wow. Zero marketing. Very first one. We went in there and we started live streaming. And he was just like, in essence, an average Joe. And I was this semi-brash, uh, ostentatious, and I use that lovingly because of my name, marketer who would talk about marketing but it was also a really weird thing because i was like i'm a failed business owner i like i didn't do well and i'm sleeping out of my car not many people know this but i'm talking about marketing and so i had the imposter syndrome a little bit but i realized that talking from a place of wisdom of this is what i did wrong and this is some lessons i learned was really valuable for the audience and they really enjoyed it. So that 3000 initial concurrent viewers just grew and grew and grew. And then Meerkat put on this thing, which was a leaderboard of who's growing the fastest. And the number one G week after week after week was Grant Cardone, big G. I love Grant Cardone. He's amazing. Yep. But we were number two. And I was like, yes. You were I'm number okay two? With- yes, number two. We were the second fastest growing live streaming influencers and wow. that built from there to working with meerkat working with periscope and catch it was a startup that was in that space which then transitioned over to moving out of new york city because we got out of the car into an apartment that was ridiculously expensive because it's new york city then a job opportunity happened i flew all the way here to los angeles this is where i live now I've been able to build a consulting business off of this, but it's also turned into blowing up in Snapchat, which was a huge platform for a long time. Still a huge platform, let's be honest. But then that moved into Musical.ly and TikTok and Lively and live streaming. And just every time one of these new platforms happen, I jump into it and I get a lot of exposure. And it's kind of just like the short version of my crazy story. Just going back on your point, you said that as soon as a social media platform comes out, we should all jump on it, jump on this trend. That's a funny thing. That's exactly totally different to my thinking, which is wrong, by the way. Because when Periscope came out, I was one of the first ones to go on it. I had a few live, no one watched. And then I said, I'll wait. I'll wait until it gets popular. Then I'll start using it, which is totally different to what you're saying, which is as soon as you see a new social media platform, jump on it and watch it grow because it will help you promote yourself. Yes, and it's it's understanding, uh, you have to have the right strategy when you jump in. Whenever I jump into a new platform, I'm learning how to create content natively on that platform. For instance, when I jumped into Snapchat, Snapchat didn't have nearly any of the features it does now. This was before Instagram stories came out. So I had to learn how to storytell in this short, bite-sized, slide-after-slide segment. And what I did is I would learn how to tell a whole story only using the fast-forward feature, the rewind feature, or doing jump cuts and things like that. And that has translated over into knowing how to do decent editing if I go to do a YouTube video, because a YouTube video is, you know, cut after cut after cut and knowing how to tell that story and knowing how to be concise because you only have a couple of seconds in a snap. Well, that translates over into telling a YouTube, like making a YouTube video and being concise and to the point, because for instance, one of my clients was helping them with a YouTube video. And when you're looking at a social media, I'm kind of going on a side tangent here, but this will make sense. You have to understand the metrics to track. If you're a small YouTuber, for instance, you're not going to look at subs. You're not going to look at watch time. The real thing you want to pay attention to is your retention rate. Because if people click on your video and watch it for 20% of the time and then drop off as an average, well, then that tells you certain things. That tells you what you need to change up in your video. Knowing the Snapchat thing of how to be concise in your message and in your story and keep it entertaining and fast paced. I helped my client generate a YouTube video that had a 50% retention time, which is astronomically high, which then turns into a highly effective advertisement 
which gets people to watch it. And then you do retargeting and that generates business. So it all ties together. When you jump into these new platforms, it's learning how to create new versions of content and learn those skills because those skills are able to translate over into other platforms that are more established. It's building a community because like again, Snapchat, the only way to grow when it first launched was to do takeovers. Basically what we're doing now, a collaboration between two people. I would jump on their plat their account, they would jump on my account, we'd get introduced. Well, podcasting is no different. Most of your listeners actually don't know who I am, which is fine, that's great. So us doing this gets me an opportunity to introduce your listeners to who I am. And then I get to share you and this podcast out to my network. And there's that nice cohesive, some of your listeners are gonna come around and be like, oh my God, this guy's awesome. Some of them are gonna be like, this guy's an idiot. Whatever, that happens, it's fine. It's just part of the growth mechanism. That, so to bring this all together, it's have the right strategy. Go in not expecting to go viral or anything like that. Go in and experiment. You still need to have your time and energy on the established platforms that are working for you, that are making you revenue, but you can generate a ton of valuable skills and also generate business when you're in those new platforms. I think there's uh, no shortage of new listeners because I was speaking to my wife the other day. I said, check out this guy, Guy Vaynerchuk. I, I, I think he's awesome. My wife said, who is that guy? I said, he's always on my Facebook. He's always on LinkedIn. You, you don't know him? And she goes, no, never heard of him. So have you heard of Tony Robbins? He goes, yeah, I've heard of Tony Robbins. So it's, it's quite astonishing because we think that this guy, this famous person, everybody knows, but actually there are lots of people who never heard of them. Yeah. And, right. And to, um, for, for example, uh, uh, Austin, I wanted to uh, ask you something. My audience consists of coaches and consultants. So can you offer any social media tips for them to actually grow their business, uh, to promote their brand? Fantastic question, happy to. Coaches and consultants have one thing in common. They are very good at communicating their message and their value, which is very important. What I would suggest to your audience is to Think about creating content that starts with a long form piece of content and then create systems and templates to break that long form piece of content down into multiple social medias. Because if we think about a basic marketing funnel, which I know you have tons of experience on, and if anybody doesn't go talk to Alan about building marketing funnels, but a very simple, broad marketing funnel, you have your awareness stage where people don't know who you are. You have your consideration stage where they're trying to figure out if you are the right fit for their problem. And then you have that conversion stage where they're actually making that purchase. Most people try and focus on the last two sections, the consideration and the conversion. Like, hey, am I collecting those email opt-ins? Am I doing my webinars? Am I doing you know, the right A-B split testing of my landing pages and my programs and things like that? Because you know that is extremely important. The interesting thing about social media is there is so much money to be made if you focus on the awareness stage. If you create, say, this podcast that we are creating together, we take this podcast and we send it to a service to transcribe the entire podcast. This podcast might be an hour long, let's say. Well, that hour long transcription can then be broken down into blog articles that can be broken down into social media posts. You could pull out quotes or tips and put them as carousel images for Instagram. If you think like this, you can create a lot of content off of one piece of, of long form content yep. and then generate massive amounts of awareness again and again and again and again. And then if you want to supercharge your brand, you set up retargeting advertisements. For instance, that uh, client I said who had a 50% retention rate on YouTube. It is a fantastic value-driven YouTube video that doesn't really sell. There's a couple of soft pitches in there, but it's not like, hey, come sign up to my list. My client took that and started advertising it for pre-roll videos 
views on YouTube. Basically on YouTube, if anybody doesn't know, you don't get charged unless they watch 30 seconds or more of this video. So you can get a lot of free impressions because people skip that after that 15 seconds. Her video advertisement had a 50% retention rate. Basically one out of every two people watched for more than 30 seconds. And the video itself was like five minutes long. They watched for about three minutes. So it was three minutes of my client just literally giving tip after tip after tip, value after value after value. And you're like, oh, that's probably good. But what she did from there is set up more retargeting ads, another value-driven video, and another one that also had 50% retention, and not even asking for that sale. And what ends up happening is her search results for her name skyrockets because people are like, oh my God, I see this person everywhere. Who is she? And they put her name in and her uh, SEO results are going up. They are opting in automatically. She's not even like pushing for it. And then when she runs the ad, that is the 15 seconds, hey, come, you know, sign up to my free offer. There's so much awareness already there. The cost per conversion is so minuscule. It's insane. So it's just focusing on generating lots and lots of value. If the Gary Vaynerchuk listeners know what this is. It's the jab, 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 right hook. It's the give, 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 give. And then you throw the, hey, come sign up to my offer. So coaches, consultants, think about creating long form pieces of content. That long form piece of content might be a consulting session you have with a client. If you're using a service like Zoom, which is what we're on right now, you can record this. Then you can send it to somebody and splice up and take out maybe the banter back and forth and only bring the real value. And then you turn that 10, 15 video clips into an online course, which you sell for, you know, 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. Therefore you use that as a mechanism, another revenue source, or you use that as an amazing free offer that converts extremely high. It's just finding multiple ways to repurpose your long form content into micro pieces of content for all platforms. Wow. Great. Thank you. Um, you're you're not charging for this, right? Uh, yeah. You know, (laughs) if anybody needs more help, come talk to me. I'm happy to help you, but this is a hundred percent free. Take it and run. Actually here's, can I go on a little side tangent for a hot second? A, A lot of the times people think that, oh, I have this valuable information that I need to charge for because it's so valuable, it's so important. I can guarantee you 100% of the time, if you give your most valuable information away for free, you're not going to lose money. You're actually going to gain a tremendous amount of revenue because there's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. We are in the age of information. You can find anything. If you want to learn how to advertise on Facebook, you can go to Skillshare for $10 a month and learn Facebook advertising from top people. I know I have a Skillshare course. It has like 2000 people who are uh, students and it's great. You know, I've given away all my secrets. I have people contact me month after month after month. Like, great. I've gone through this. I've set it up. I'm having some trouble. Can you help me with this? Yes, absolutely. Take your best information and give it away for free. Put it out there because you're going to generate so much awareness, so many eyeballs, and it's going to force you to come up with better information because you're like, oh man, I've given it all away. It's out there. It's for the public. People are executing on these ideas and they're actually doing these things. How do I help the next level? And it forces you to get even better, which makes you price premium because you're so much more advanced. You're not teaching, setting up basic marketing funnels. You're like, let's look at how to take your marketing funnel. That's, you know, converting at 10% and optimize it to 40%. Oh, a 10% to 40% conversion rate is insanely good of an optimization. And you can charge insane price points for that because it makes sense. People are tracking that into dollars. I think it's a really big difference to a lot of people now who are actually wanting to make a sale right away using social media. 
Whereas the smart thing to do, as you just mentioned, is to build your brand, build that goodwill, and then they will actually, actually, they will ask you, what do you have, what do you have to sell? What is your service? Sure. So, a perfect, a perfect example. You can do both at once. For instance, let's take a platform like LinkedIn. Everybody knows LinkedIn and everybody has experienced the same thing when you get on LinkedIn. You connect with somebody and they send you a message to connect with you. You connect with them and they very quickly send this automated message that says, hi, I've basically connected with you to give you my pitch, my free offer or sign up to my call. Have you once ever responded positively to any of those free offers or any of those sign up for my call? I've responded, but not positively. Exactly. Everybody does it. Stop doing it. A better mechanism where you will actually generate sales is you connect with somebody, then do this. I know it sounds insane. Look at their profile, read up on that, and then send them a audio message because you can do it from your phone that says, hi, Alan, it's really great to connect with you. I see that you're a podcaster focused on coaches and consultants. That's fantastic. I'd love to talk to you about how I can bring my expertise over to your audience. What did I just do there, Alan? You actually gave the person what I can do to help you. It's all about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How it's you can serve how, them. How I can serve you in a way that actually makes sense for you. I also used your name. I also did something that is a human touch. I used my voice versus a text message. And now I know a lot of people might be nervous by this. Just, I promise you, if you practice it again and again and again, it gets really easy. Plus, if you don't like it, you don't have to send it. It's fantastic. But if you do that, or if you go and just ask questions, ask questions, hey, what's your business? Who do you serve? What's the biggest challenge? Oh, that's fantastic. Maybe there's somebody in my network. And then you give and you give and you give they're gonna turn around and wanna work with you. An example of this is I connected with a gentleman and he was in an industry that is not something I work with. And he was looking for opportunities to promote his, uh, his program he had, this uh, financial services program. And he was looking for podcasters to sponsor, uh, to be a sponsor for. And basically he was like, if they wanna have like a results-based compensation i'm highly interested in that and i was like so you're telling me if i hook you up with a bunch of sponsors who are or a bunch of podcasters who are always looking for sponsors that's going to be helpful for you great and i called my list of people and i was like hey do you need a sponsor and they're like yes spent 15 minutes hooking people up with sponsorships and secret i asked both sides Hey, if this works out, will you uh, throw some money my way as like a thank you, you know? And I don't make anything formal because I, if they don't do it, if like I hook people up again and again and they don't do it, I stop hooking them up. It's a very simple premise, you know? And they all said, yes, of course, hook them up. My podcaster friends are happy. They're throwing me a few bones. This company who's getting these amazing sponsorship opportunities are happening. They're throwing me a lot of bones and it's a win-win. And then that person turns around and introduces me to the head of an organization for me to go speak at, which then turns into more money in my pocket. And I haven't even tried to sell once here. I've just been giving value. That is, that is so good to hear. That is so smart as well. One of the lessons I think people need to learn is that in social media, it's a lot about building relationships. And it's not about going for the sale. I mean, Nowadays, me and you, we receive so many connections or new friends. They say hi, but we know that there's a hidden agenda behind what they're doing. So, but you're, what you're saying is, don't do that. Serve them, build the goodwill, build your brand, and the money will come. Business will come. Absolutely. Yeah. It's that simple. It's you, you wouldn't do this in person. You wouldn't like sit down for a cup of coffee with somebody and try and sell them on the very first meeting without having any idea. Like, hi, I just met you. Okay, my name's Austin and my first package is gonna start at $55,000. And you're like, you don't even know what the fuck I do or what I need. Sorry for my language. But uh, 
you don't do that. You you ask questions and you build relationships and your net worth equal or your net yeah, your net worth equals your net work. The yeah. more relationships you build and social media allows you to build insanely good relationships quickly sitting on your toilet, you know, doing whatever you need to do. It's an effective platform. Use it the way it's supposed to. Don't go for that sale right away. How long do you spend on social media? Or, or actually, put it another way, and another question is, how long would you suggest if like coaches and consultants starting out, how, much, how long do you think you suggest them to work on them? What's your routine like? Okay, so I can tell you my routine and I can tell you different suggestions because depending on what systems you have in place, predicates kind of how much time you have to put into it. I focus the majority of my energy when it comes to social media in two categories, creating content and building relationships. What I mean by that is in the morning, the first thing I do is I call it my consuming. I get my coffee, I get my food. And at the same time, I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast because I want to feed my body. I want to feed my mind. I want to feed my soul. Once I'm full, full up, I don't open my emails or anything like that. I go straight into creating a video, editing a video, um, writing an article, anything that might be a long form piece of content, doing a podcast such as this, because the long form piece of content is where I get the best information coming out of my brain. And then from there, I have systems in place. I have people in place. I have templates in place to turn the long form piece of content into that smaller pieces of content to distribute out, schedule up and send away. What I then do after that is I do my lead generation, I do my work with my clients, whatever I have on my schedule for the day. And then at the end of the day, I spend about 30 to 45 minutes responding to comments and starting conversations. Now, you think that's not a lot of time and it's not because you have to really focus your time and energy, but like the audio recordings or the video recordings that you can send to somebody is so much faster than typing out a message. If you just open up your phone and you record with a LinkedIn, for instance, Hey, how's it going? It's really nice to talk to you. Like who you looking to connect with or, Hey, I see you're a TEDx speaker. I'm also working on my TEDx. What was the process like for you? Just building these normal conversations. You do 20 of them, let's say in 45 minutes, that gives you like two minutes per, which is more than enough time. Uh, you crush through a bunch of these, and then you're done. And you're like, great, I've done my work for the day. You just do it again and again and again. You don't have to do a ton all in one day. You just have to do strategic amounts every single day. Consistent. Consistency, yeah. It's a long haul game. Like, I still have hundreds of messages I need to respond to. It's like, sometimes you just recognize like, you're not gonna get to all of them. You do your best. If you're just starting out, you need to over index on how much time you're spending there talking to people, but more importantly, listening. I cannot tell you how important this is. You just have to do it. You have to actually consume in these groups and go, what are the problems my audience are having? Like right now, I can guarantee you all of your speakers are feeling a massive hurt from the coronavirus with cancellations of event after event after event with working from home, things like that. What if, and I can help every single person with this, what if you learned how to actually speak on camera? Because speaking on camera is very different than speaking from a stage. And what if you turned your business from trying to go after stage after stage after stage to setting up your own stage using live streaming, using video, and building that event from your little apartment you're in or your home or wherever, you have a stage in the form of your phone. You don't have to worry about the coronavirus. You get to learn all the marketing. You get to get all the dollars from that event. And if you build a big enough event, then you reach out to a company like Zoom and you go, hey, Zoom, I'm having 500 people on here. Would you like to sponsor this, right? Nice. Zoom's like, hey, yeah, you know, we want to sponsor it or whatever the product might be or the service might be. 
you take control away from this whole coronavirus thing, all your speakers can start actually building up their own brands and their own events using their phones. And it's that simple. For consultants and coaches, what would you recommend um, for them to do? Uh, stick with one platform or spread themselves out? Nope, one platform. Start with one platform. Which, uh, how would they decide which one? It, this is a difficult question because there are so many factors and I'll briefly go through them, but it's gonna come down to what works best for the person. Because creating content on Facebook, like video content on Facebook and video content on YouTube are completely different. YouTube is about uh, search and intent. You have to understand what people are typing in and create content around that. Facebook and Instagram are about clickbait. It's about creating these virally sensations and knowing how to think like that and generating that sort of attention. Now, I say this with the caveat of, say, Facebook, you can 100% use intent uh, marketing and know what people are looking for, create content for that, but send it through an advertising system. And if you understand advertising, I'd say, go on Facebook and do that. This is a very complicated question. What I would say is focus on one that works for you. Try out the different systems. That is like the easiest way of doing it. Figure out which interface you like the best. Figure out which one you're getting a little bit of traction on and just build from there. Once you get one platform going decently, then you can scale to a second platform, a third platform. Then you can take that platform and explode it even further, maybe by throwing advertising dollars behind it or you know, doing massive influence or outreach or whatever it might be. So. I can't give a, this is the one you need to be on. If, if you really want to be kind of ballsy and get a lot of runway, go to the new platforms like TikTok, which is exploding right now. Yeah. And you can generate a ton of extra momentum, but you have to learn how to create content natively to that. So that's a very long answer for, I don't know. It kind of just depends what works for you. Right. So basically if you like the platform, and you see that the platform generates some traction for you, then go head on. Yep. It, nice. It's silly to be like, oh, focus where your customers are. Your customers are on every single one of them. Fortune 100 CEOs are on Facebook, you know, too. They have a Facebook account. You can target those people specifically with advertising, or you could go on LinkedIn and do it on LinkedIn, you know, build your network there. It, the audiences are on all of them. At this point in time, we are on multiple platforms. So just focus on what one works best for you. Great. When your clients approach you, what do you see as their main problems? Like what a common main problem that they have? The biggest main problem, I call it the six figure trap. What I mean by this is when you're a consultant or a speaker and you're starting out, you're making zero dollars. So you're putting all this time, energy, effort in, and you finally like get something to start working. And you make it to that first benchmark of six figures. And what you have to do to go from that six figures plus, it's a very different than what you have to do to go from zero to six figures. And we get in this mentality trap around that six figure mark. And that is the big problem. Basically, they are afraid to take risks. They are afraid to do a lot of things. Like when you make six figures, when you're like building up to that place, you're looking at, okay, if I need to bring somebody on, how do I bring somebody on for eight, 10, $12 an hour? Because I need them to take over my VA assistance or whatever it might be. And that's important. But when you're going from six to seven or six, even to multi six, you need to bring in experts to help you because you have to go, you have to have somebody who actually can dig in deep and look at something and go, this small tweak is going to make a massive difference in what you're doing. So that's kind of like the main challenge that I see people have is that mentality shift. But once they do that and they bring someone like me or somebody like you on, they go from six figures to, 
a half a million dollars in business over the course of a, like one, two, three years. You know, it scales really rapidly at hockey sticks. So yeah, that's my answer. That's a really good answer. That makes me think about when I started out um, with my business, I had a blog as well. I spent a lot of time hiring writers from the Philippines to create mm -hmm. content for me. None of them worked. None no. of them worked. They were, uh, the price was very good. However, the quality was really, really poor. So it wasn't until I had writers actually from the US and from the UK that actually things started to work out. But of course, the prices were about four or five times more. So like Absolutely. hiring the right people makes such a huge difference. Like you just cannot stress that enough. Exactly. And the way you hire the people from the Philippines or Sri Lanka or wherever it is, is you first have to hire an expert in to give you a template. For instance, I started a YouTube channel. It literally was with zero uh, subscribers because my goal is, look, it's 2020. I'm going to prove to you, you can grow a YouTube channel from zero in today's day. And I like already got my first 100 uh, massive creator, Roberto Blake, literally just shouted me out to be like, look, this guy's doing well. The thing is, my thumbnails are being designed by somebody from Fiverr. But my initial base of thumbnails, I hired a creative director in who understands YouTube thumbnails, and I paid them an, a good amount of money for them to look at it and go, this is what we're going to do for you. This is how you're going to stand out, because they took the time to look through my entire industry. They looked at what everybody else was doing, and they said, this is how you're going to stand out. I got that template. And then I went to the Fiverr person and it's $5 and I get two thumbnails. And I'm like, this is fantastic. You know, that's super affordable. The thing you need to do is hire on experts to build the system and the templates and then hire on the $5 an hour, the $10 an hour, you know, people to execute on those tasks. That's how you create a scalable business. Guys, that was an awesome tip there. So please write that down somewhere. <laughs> Please, Austin, share some of your, one of the success stories from your clients, which really stuck out for you. Uh, I shared one about my, one of my clients with the YouTube, which was fantastic. Another client that I helped out, we, what I did is I was working behind the scenes and we created a system to respond to inquiries and build the back end in an authentic, organic way where we actually got to get rid of employees who weren't necessarily working out and have automated bots take over and scale their business. And this person now uh, just got hired by a CEO of a, four, uh, of a $500 million brand. And I'm not gonna say who it is because I wanna respect that, but wow. this is a major US brand that everybody here knows and uh, my client is just dominating, working with them, getting amazing testimonials from somebody who runs a $500 million business. And I'm just like, way to go. Bravo. I love it. That is, that is something to be proud of. Amazing. I, I love when my clients are successful. That's like the best yes. success for me. That's the best testimonial for me. It's like, you've taken these these strategies, these examples, these tips, this information, you've executed on it, and now these are your results? Fantastic, you know? Right. Okay, one of the questions I really need to want to ask you is, what is your daily routine like? Can what is my daily of, routine? Yeah, can you tell us, take us through that? Uh, yes, absolutely. I kind of explained the, the beginning of my day, how yeah. it's like creating that long form content. Uh, throughout the course of my day, it's broken up into chunks. I have large chunks. There's a video by the YouTube creator, Casey Neistat, that has this really great introduction where he talks about what it takes to be creative. And you need large chunks of like open time to be creative, to think creatively, to plan, to execute, to experiment, to fail. One of the things I try and do is I track how many failures I had in a day. 
we are so afraid of failing that we never actually go out there and try new things. And if you're afraid of failing, you're going to fail. It's period, end of story. You're just going to fail in the worst ways. There's a quote, uh, the master has failed more times than the apprentice has even started. And that's really what it takes in social media or in life is like going out there and throwing something against the wall and seeing the reaction and going, oh, what did I learn from this? I have blocks of time that are my failure time. That's like, what is this weird little idea I have and how do I do it and how do I go for it? What is telling me like, oh, I can't do this thing. Okay, let me go do that. I, in my life, I've done some insane things. Like I've snowboarded down a mountain in nothing but a leopard printed thong. I made the front page of the paper doing that at 17 <laughs> years old. It's because people told me not to do it. And I went, mm, that sounds insane. Let's do it. I dress up like a unicorn and dance around like a silly person for thousands of people on the internet. Why? Because it scared the living bejesus out of me. And I was like, <laughs> let me go do it. Like I find things that scare me, that excite me, that like gets me going. And then I go and I try those things because I want to learn. Um, so I have sections of my day literally carved out for that. I have a very great accountability partner that I don't focus my entire life on just working. I have a puppy who will let me know it's time for you to play with me. It's time for you to get out of the house, get away from being behind your computer. And a lot of my time is spent on that. And then a lot of my time is put in there working with clients, you know, doing consulting calls, like that's boring business stuff. And, you know, responding on social medias and things like that. So, uh, the end of my day, I always designate to relationship time. Me and my significant other, we have dinner together. We talk about our days. We talk about various things that are going on. You have to actually carve out time for things that are like downtime or relationship time. I'm sure you know, working in your business, Alan, like when you start out, you're so focused, everything else drops. Well, yeah. you learn, oh no there is relationship time there is relaxed time there is time where i need to go to the park and read a book you have to schedule that in it's so important so that's my, kind my of wife I'm... reminds me that every every day so i don't need any, i don't even need to think about that someone's reminding <laughs> me well that's why they're there they're amazing yeah how many hours do you actually spend on your business have you ever calculated that is it a nine to five thing no, um, I don't have any kids and I'm blessed in that capacity that I, I get to be extremely selfish in that way. So I spend, I spend more time than I probably should on my business, but I also factor into my business going for a walk and listening to an audio book because listening to an audio book like, um, Success Through Positive Mental Attitude is the one I'm listening to right now. It's an amazing book. It gives me ideas about what sort of content to create or what businesses I have. The, in that book, they talk about setting time aside literally with no distractions to just think. And I know how hard that is in today's modern age, but like, try this. Literally shut off your phone, kick everybody out of your house, go into a room, turn off the lights, sit not in a place that you're going to fall asleep and just think it's kind of like a meditation but what ends up happening is things start firing really fast in your brain and that really nagging problem you've had for a long time starts falling into place click 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 and then you have a solution so i actually think about that as work time even though i'm just kind of sitting there like not saying anything it, it's all work in different capacities and none of it is work at the same time because mm. I mean, you understand like it, it, you wake up in the morning, jumping out of bed, excited, like what's on my docket for today? Let's go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I want, I want to know like, specifically what, how do you help your clients? Do you, is, do you do a done for you service or do you coach them or, or can I talk a bit about that? Sure. What I do for my clients, I have a couple of different services. One of them is my clients come to me. This is generally somebody who's making around six figures. And they're like, look, I need to scale my business, but I don't know how, 
right? They might have some marketing funnels in place. They might not. And what I do is I come in and I look at what they're doing, what their business is, how much money they're making, where they're spending their money, you know, what their content is. And I go, okay, here's your game plan. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take these videos, put them in this order. This is your new opt-in order. If that's what you need. Um, we're going to turn this into a program. We're going to put these people in place and here's the template. Like you need a graphic designer. Great. Here's your graphic design template of what you need to do for your YouTube thumbnails or whatever it might be. Um, I'm talking in bags here because it's going to be a little bit different for each person, but we build a plan that they execute on step after step after step. And what that does is it scales their business. It takes them from kind of being completely reactive in their business, doing their client work or whatever it might be and building the systems so that way they can start, you know, leading the business and putting other people in place. That's one way I do it. I work. I do have a uh, done for you type service where say that same person's like, listen, I don't have the time for that. Here's a whole bunch of money. I want you to build my entire marketing funnel and entire system out. Go do it. Fine. That's easy enough. I know how to do it. I've done it a, a number of times. And then there's another service I have. I, I know it's hard, but you understand, like it's all kind of ties together, which is ongoing consulting. Uh, basically people are looking at really dominating in the social media space. You can have the perfect plan, but if you've never actually tried getting into social media, you're not really sure what the heck is going on. So you bring somebody like me on, and we put a little game plan together, you start executing on it. Like, here's a simple game plan for all our speakers and consultants. I want every single person here to take out their phone every single day, set it up, and talk to their phone for three to five minutes. Do a three to five minute speech, just recording your thoughts or your ideas. You don't have to post it, but by doing that, you one, learn how to talk to a camera, which is really difficult for a lot of people. Two, you're actually recording your thoughts, your ideas, your thought leadership, which can be used later and turned into longer form pieces of content. And three, if you get really good at it, you can just post it and then you're creating daily content and that's super easy. But what I would do is say we're doing this, right? Then I would look at you, you would send it to me or you would post it and then I would go, okay, here's what the analytics say and here's how you're going to improve the next video. That client I was speaking to you about who 50% retention rate, she had a 20% retention rate at the 15 second mark. We were seeing a massive drop off of like 50% after 15 seconds. So it's going in and looking at it and going, what happens here? And what sort of evidence uh, have, can we like bring up and go, here's what I think. And I was saying that she had an introduction that was 15 seconds long that started right around there. And I was like, okay, let's cut this down. Let's make it a three second intro and let's cut more of this extemporaneous speaking that you're doing in your videos down. And then she went from a 20% retention rate to a 50% retention rate. And then she was like, oh man, I, I see what you're talking about. Let me do that. And now she's consistently dominating in that space. So it's just under having somebody in your back pocket to look at things and go, here's what you need to do to be more effective. I think that is just so important. I just really want to stress that because a lot of the times, even though we've been in our business for so long, we assume we are experts in what we do, but we still need a third pair of eyes, like a, 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 another party to look at what we're doing and tell us what they think, what their thoughts are. Another expert to have a look at our business. Because we are so, we are blinded by what we do, by our work, by our business. We just don't see a lot of things. So that's really, really important. But anyway, the great thing about your client, 50%, is, that is just pretty amazing. So yep. it was all from cutting out a lot of the fluff that didn't work by looking at the analytics. Yep. Looking at the analytics and then making observations on what that analytics say, what the data says. And this is how I approach all social media. This is like, we put some stuff out there and then it's like, what does the data say, right? What is it saying is working? What is not working? How do we change this up? Cutting out the extra stuff where they're dropping out, cutting out where that person's being repetitive, cutting out, uh, you know, cut, cut, cut. And then it's like, okay, what do we add in here? Well, now you're just a talking head. 
So here, add these graphics in here to pop up here, or this here. Here's how we add the humor in because, you know, you have to actually have a sense of humor when you're creating content on social media because, like, this world is ridiculous and funny. There's a virus named after a beer. Come on now, you know? Um, and people are thinking that if you drink the beer, you get the virus. I saw that somewhere. That makes, which, totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The world is ridiculous. You got to have a sense of humor and it's knowing how to incorporate that and speaking to your audience in a way that is both makes them laugh, but also gives them that value. So it's, it's a number of things, but yeah, that's just a simple example. Where can people go to check out your services, your coaching or whatever? This is easy. All right. Write this down, everybody. It's my name, Austin, A U S. T I N I U L I A N O. Put that into Google. You'll get my social media. So you'll get my website. You put those two, the Austin Juliano together at gmail.com. You can just reach out to me directly. If you need some help, don't know what you need, reach out to me. We'll have a conversation. I'll get you squared away. And if I can't help you, I'll refer you to somebody else because I can guarantee you all you speakers and consultants out here, one of the best things you can learn is saying, no, I'm not going to be able to help you in the way you need here. Go to this other person. Your business will explode by saying no and focusing on your areas of expertise. I just want everyone to know that Austin is a very approachable guy. I met him on LinkedIn, we had a chat, super nice guy very helpful, very approachable. So if you've got time, reach out to him on Facebook or on LinkedIn, just have a strike conversation. He's um, yeah, he's a very down to earth guy. And you also have a gift for the audience here. Is that right? Yes. You were speaking about LinkedIn, right? This is directly tied to LinkedIn. One of the hardest things people have when it comes to sales on social media is creating a system that you can track you can measure, you can change, and that works consistently time and time again. I've created a system. It's very simple for you guys to use on any sort of platform. I use LinkedIn as the example where you can create what I call a recipe book. Like if you were to go and pull out a recipe, you know the ingredients, you know the order, you know exactly the step-by-step -step instruction. We create a social media sales recipe book. Go on to my website, it's social.austinuliano.com. Sign up, it's a video, it's a workbook, it's a training. Take it, you'll love it. Great. And all those links which Austin mentioned, they will be in the description on the YouTube video, on the Facebook posts, and on the social media as well. So just go to the description and click on the links. Austin, thanks a lot for coming on the show, man. Knowledge so bomb much. after knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. So happy to have you on the show today. Excellent. Love it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for friend. having me. Thank you, audience, for listening to me. I can't wait to talk to all of you. Thank you. All right. Catch you later, my friend.